the Yankees have added even more strikeout power to their bullpen. Each of those relievers finished top three last season in strikeouts per nine innings among major league pitchers who worked at least 40, 40 innings regardless of role. Chapman led the majors with Miller second and Batances third. So it's a super back of the bullpen. Is it as dominant as these historically good bullpens? You go back to the nasty boys of the Reds in the 90s with Randy Myers, Norm Charlton, and Rob Dibble. How about the 96 Yankees with Nelson, Moe, and Wetland closing things out? The 2003 Astros went Lidge, Dotel, and then Billy Wagner, the flamethrower at the end. And you see a couple other options. The Royals obviously stand out here, Bob. But when you look in terms of dominant bullpens, do the Yankees right now match up with those? I think that plus one. I mean, that plus ten. This team, this this bullpen, you know, is going to strike out a lot. The swings and miss ratio is going to be through the roof, in part because we're now in an era where hitters are up there swinging for home runs, and there's much less embarrassment about striking out than there was 10 or 20 years ago. So the strikeout numbers, I think you have to look at it in context. Nevertheless, these three guys that the Yankees have right now, I would say as a trio, are the most dominant tr relievers. I think I've ever seen, I've ever covered, I think probably in the history of the game. Yeah, I concur with Bob. If they pitch to their resumes, they will have strikeout ratios like no bullpen trio that we've ever seen before, and there's no reason to believe that they won't do that. I thought Patances had an interesting quote the other day. He said he's looking forward to the game where the three of them come in and they go nine for nine and they strike out all nine guys. <laughs> now, normally you think, ah, that's high school talk. That's little league talk. No, that's, that will happen this year. These guys are going to come in a game and I bet you they have a situation where they do that. And I think, I've mentioned this on the show before, not only do they come in and, and get those tangible numbers, you actually see them getting the save, getting the win. I think they get inside the opposing team's head. I really do think when teams are down against the Yankees in the fifth and the sixth inning and those three guys are looming, I think that that team is going to say, we better do something quickly because we're not doing anything against them. Well, I think speaking of intangibles, I mean, last year, the, if there was a criticism of the Yankee team last year as far as the fans or whatever, they said that with Jeter gone, there's nobody that really excites you on this team. Well, this is going to be the focal point of this team this year. I mean, people are going to pay money to come to the ballpark once this, once this trio gets going. Uh, this is going to be quite a focal point when uh, these games get into the seventh inning and all of a sudden you're going to see these three flame flowers one after another coming into the game. I mean, people are going to want to pay money to see that. So I think that is an intangible maybe the Yankees thought about when they made this deal, but certainly bringing in a guy like Chapman, this guy is a person who puts fannies in the seats. Right, and I think Jack made a great point there because as, as, as much as you can look at it as, you know, they were already a good bullpen and Wilson was pretty good, Wilson doesn't get inside guys' heads. Like, and, and that's a real thing. You, know, you talk to hitters, and they're going to be thinking about that. If they fall behind by a run or two, they're going to start pressing, and maybe there'll be more leads to protect because of that looming threat. I think the biggest, uh, you know, the way this will help the Yankees is if they get in the postseason with all those off days mm -hmm. because you won't have to worry much at all about, you know, resting a guy or, or holding this guy back or this guy worked yesterday because you're going to have so many off days in there. Now they got to get there. But if they get there, that could be a pretty killer combination in the postseason, like we saw with the Nasty Boys in 1990 and the Royals in 14 and 15. You know, but you got to get there. And, and, and until you get there, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to anoint them the best ever. I mean, we saw the Giants. You know, the Giants won three World Series. They didn't have the crazy strikeout numbers, but but guys like you know Affelt, Romo, and Casilla, mm -hmm. um, interchangeable sort of as closers, and the way that the way the Bochy used them, Wilson, one of those years too. Um, they deserve to be in the conversation just because they won three with the same guys. Um, but certainly for, for sex appeal, for strikeouts, for excitement, and for what it does to those hitters, put it in their heads, it's hard to top this trio. Yeah, and Jack, to your point earlier in the show, you mentioned the effect on the rotation. Maybe some of those guys know that if they can just get through six innings and hand that ball off with a lead, they're going to get more wins than they normally would get. And I also wonder how it affects the rest of the team knowing, hey, guys, we just have to have a lead going into the seventh and we're going to be in good shape. Right, there's a part of me, and I've got Bob Klappish, the college pitcher, a few feet down from me. There's a part <laughs> of me that hates the idea of saying to the pitcher, just give us six, just give us five and two-thirds. But that's the era that we are in. That's what started pitchers are expected to do. You give uh, somebody six solid innings and you get a pat on the back. Let everybody else handle it. But Bob, that's what the Yankees should think. We've heard Joe Girardi last year and whatever pitcher it might be, I've told him to give me the best that he has for 90 or 95 pitches, whether it was Pineda or Tanaka when they were coming back from an injury or something like that. I think that's the formula they're going to follow. 
I think what we're, we're going to see here, I think the, the one thing that separates the Yankees' bullpen from everyone else, from all the other ones that have gone down in history as being great, the Yankees have the hardest thrower ever in the history of the game now wearing pinstripes. I mean, Araldis Chapman throws 105 miles an hour. Not all the time. I mean, he hasn't done it very often. He routinely hits 101, 102, which in itself is crazy. But 105 cannot be hit. It cannot be hit. The human brain cannot react to 105. <laughs> Remember in 2010, Tony Gwynn Jr. was at faced, uh, faced Chapman on the day he hit 105. And after the game, he told reporters, you cannot put the bat on the ball at that velocity. It cannot be done. So I think that's what sets the Yankees apart. That's what sets Chapman apart is this inhuman velocity. I mean, I don't know if he's going to throw 105 in 2016, but it's going to sure be fun to watch. Are you talking about 105 as opposed to 75? <laughs> 75 what? You're talking about... For you. <laughs> <laughs> you dialed it up a little higher than 75. Please. please. <laughs> hey, some of us aspired to 75, but we could throw a little, a little high school curveball. But, uh, yeah, I mean, 105, it, 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 it's amazing. It really is. I, I, he's, he pushes the boundaries of what the human body can do. You know, it, can the human shoulder sustain that? Can it, can it, can it move that fast to generate that much uh, arm speed to do that? You know, let alone the reaction time. So it's, it's definitely fun to watch, and it's going to be unprecedented. And the Yankees, as always, you know, the Yankees are always built on big stars and Cashman or uh, you know Chapman has a lot of baggage for sure but once he's out there on the field you can just enjoy watching him pitch and it, he's, he's an event he's an event every time he takes them out and the Yankees are built on event kind of players we can all guess what that 105 might be like and Bob referenced Quinn Jr. we had a player on the show earlier tonight Didi Gregorius who has faced Chapman and when I asked him what is it like to be in that dugout when he comes in the game he said you say to yourself good luck and he laughed but he wasn't joking around I mean that's the kind of impact this guy could have that's the kind of impact I think he will have and I think we all talked about it but it, it deserves to be reinforced the idea that the Yankee fans have something electric at the end of the games to look forward to.